Other thing I'd like to talk about, Daniel Jones. Um, it's an amazing situation how, it, how the, uh, the, the range of mood is has changing been around slowly Daniel a little bit. Jones. Right. Th this last, so what are we, we're at June 13th, the last two months. Yeah. You have people who love the Giants. I mean, basically wanting to give back season tickets. How dare they think about drafting yeah. Daniel Jones so high? Right. And I don't know if it is the same people. I'm assuming that there's been some crossover. Now they're so excited because a positive report comes out of minicamp. Yeah, right. And and this is uh, this is why I wanted to hint on this a little bit because, you know, again, I understand where I value Daniel Jones, and I'm not backing down from my evaluation. I would still like people to know that I'm rooting for Daniel Jones. I'm not like here going, oh, I hope he proves me right and just f up. You said that then, the day after the draft. I am this not, isn't a brand new thought. No, this is not. I don't want to be that guy. Right. I'm not here sitting like trying to root against people. It's mm -hmm. too hard to play quarterback. I've been there. I know what it takes, the work ethic, everything that goes into it. So I'm never going to be a hater those longs, along those lines. But you hear the reports. And, of course, hey, just like I said with, you know, as I start to hear reports and things go by and it's the offseason, you start to talk to people. Yeah, I talked to a few people in the Giants who just gave these, like, glowing responses about Daniel Jones and I had told some of my producers here at NBC this before even Pat Shermer who this week made some comments about the situation and I think that's where we'll go to first we got these comments and I'd like everybody out there to listen to this first and then we'll, we'll talk a little more we're going to play the very best player and I and I know we're dancing around the words there but right now Eli's getting ready to have a great year and Daniel's getting ready to play and you know you just see what happens with it you know but you know we feel good about where Eli is he's our starting quarterback and we've got a young player that we think is going to be an outstanding player getting himself ready to play shocking statements I mean it's the first time I've ever seen the door cracked in the Eli Manning era to right. go like huh there's some room for somebody else here other than Eli Manning right and you know he says hey we're using some cryptic language no you are using cryptic <laughs> language just say competition we're not gonna like you know the internet's not gonna blow up right and so I you know and I get that he's trying to not to cause a stir and make it a media circus and all of those things but um, it, yeah it's I, I, I'm shocked to hear those statements at this point because I am one that I thought Eli would have to fail a few times right at the start of the season for them to you know pull the plug there and go Daniel Jones but okay I told you I heard you know things before this uh, little press conference with Pat Shermer about Daniel and Jones he was doing well I yeah. doing well and I the first few people I talked to I was like oh well, this could be just Giants propaganda I don't yeah. know about this so I made some other calls to people who didn't have a vested interest in the situation as much and uh, I mean the, the some of the things that I heard like best rookie we've ever had in here it's really? been that impressive and you know I'll go back to something I said I know during the draft process too hey this is going to be interesting too. The, you know, Pat Shermer has to answer that question a little like that because right. he, he, you know, one, they drafted the guy at number six, so mm -hmm. they want it to be positive. But two, you know, from the things you hear, and the players are seeing this, and this is one of the things where I th said this was going to be a problem for the Giants because you're, they're going to go on the field every day and they're going to go, okay, it's Eli Manning, Daniel Jones. Hmm, stronger arm, Daniel Jones. Hmm, better athlete, Daniel Jones. Hmm, throwing on the run, Daniel Jones. Who's making more plays in practice every day, you know, with their arm? Hmm, Daniel Jones. To where if you look like you're just going Eli Manning right now and he's being somewhat outperformed or opening or Daniel Jones is opening some eyes, you start right. to look like there's not competition on your team. And then they, you've already made up your mind in certain positions and it doesn't matter what anybody can do. And that could all add, make a dysfunctional locker room. I think that's where you got to be careful too about how you speak. And that's why probably Sherman answered the, players, the way. The players see everything. The players, the players see it. Exactly. Opinions, they're watching yes. practices. They're playing one-on-one. -on -one. They're seeing the quality yeah. of the ball flying by right. their head and all those things. So a, a couple of observations here. I kind of want to turn into questions for you. Yeah, you look cool. at all sides of what's going on with the Giants here. Pat said he's getting ready to play. He right. being Daniel Jones. Yeah. Spoke very well of him. He said he's on track to be ready to play week one. And people got excited about that. There's a difference between he's on track to be ready to play and he's on track to being our best quarterback week one. Right. I just want to point that that's, out. I think that's very good. Yes. That's yes. The, he the didn't con say that. Right. And I also th this is my main question. Yes. I think they're both going to have their moments. Okay. Daniel Jones is going to be better than people thought. He's going to yeah. have some really good moments in training camp, preseason. Right. Eli is going to be Eli. He's yeah. going to be steady. He's going to have times where he's really good. He's going to have times that he plays in a way that make people cry for yeah. Daniel Jones. Right. So at, in, in the middle to late August weeks, I'm going I'm to say it's going to be kind of a tie. 
So yeah. baseball tie goes to the runner. Yep, and that's right. In this situation, if it's kind of a tie. The runner's Eli. Eli gets the nod. I think so. I do. I'm with you, too. I mean, I just can't. I got to see it to believe it. And it, I would think that you're right. I mean, I think what you're saying is for Daniel Jones, even though he's on track to be able to start week one, first of all, you're exactly right. That doesn't mean he's ready to just perform at a right. high level at week one. They're basically saying we could go into week one and he can understand the game plan and we could put a game plan around him to where we feel like we would give our chance to win a game. It they doesn't basically mean he's, Right, go ahead. Basically said we love his progress and right. his potential. Exactly right. That's what they're saying there. But I'm with you in the fact of what you're saying. Like, I, I think it would have to be a blowout. Daniel Jones has won, you know, 17 out of 20 practices mm -hmm. performance-wise. Then maybe you start to hear Daniel Jones might be able to be week right. one starter. But if it's like 12 to 10 or, I mean, you know, you know, 11 to 9 Daniel Jones in practices, right. Eli's getting the advantage. 12 to 8, it's still going to be right. Eli. I mean, yeah, it's going to have to be a blowout where Daniel Jones really dominates the competition, I think, for the Giants to make that change for a week one. And it brings me to, to another observation or point and those of you with us on YouTube you see him passing in helmets and shorts you can see this these is what throws they do. here the quality of the football certainly is not gifted. the same certainly right. gifted but right. that's what most practices are these days like you're not in full pad situations yeah. with a lot of contact how many really difficult situations can they put these two quarterbacks in to really evaluate them to where the rookie beats out the veteran two-time yeah. Super Bowl champ. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's not going to be too many game realistic uh, situations you're going through, and you know, especially even when you're in team drills at this time of the year, the quarterback, you know, there's no urgency. You're not afraid to pat the ball one more time because you're like, ah, they're not going to hit me. Let me throw this ball down the field. Now, the one thing I was told though, it was not like a, oh, we're going to call these plays for Eli so he looks good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll call this set of plays for Daniel so he looks good. From everything I learned about the situation, they, they push the limits of both quarterbacks to see what they really have and to see what they're really realistically going to be, a, be able to ask of Eli yeah. physically as far as game planning stuff. So that was the one thing I was told. And I, that, to me, is a positive. Uh, because then, yes, you can start to formulate your team and your scheme around it instead of just going, well, we don't know if he can really do this, but we got it in the playbook. We hope he can pull it off. Uh, right. that, that's not smart, smart way to attack a season. Bill Belichick would never do that. So that gives me some hope that it's not being predetermined that they're going to let these guys go out there and compete a little bit, and mm -hmm. we see, we'll see where it shakes out. So right. that's really the big news of the week. I think we kind of hit on it all. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.